What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast. Today, we have John Abate from the UE Red Warriors. John, what's up? How's everything been going with you right now? And uh, how's, how would you say, with regards to your, uh, how many percentage would you, with regards to your preparation heading into UAP Season 87? Uh, everything's good, Nico. Uh, I appreciate you for giving me the opportunity to hop on this podcast. And, you know, I'd be able to have a good conversation and tell them not only just the UE fans, but everyone in general that listens to your podcast. Um, our preparations, I would say probably around 80%. 80%. You know, okay. We're, we're, we're getting there, but we're not fully there yet. And that's also good because we don't want to peak at the wrong yeah. time. Yeah. We don't want to peak at the beginning of round one or the mid round one. We want to be able to build upon and be able to peak at the right time, especially when it comes to close to the final four. How would you say is your like uh, comfort level with this UE team, starting from the moment you started playing with them in Phil Oil to now? Because that has been like how many months ago, right? It's been a while since we last played in Phil Oil. I think it was May, March. Yeah, March. it's like yeah, I think it's, it's like that. May, June. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere like that. Yeah. Ninja. Uh, coming into Phil Oil, um, we played a couple games in Pinoy Liga. I think mm-hmm. it was maybe around eight or ten before that. Yeah and it was pretty quickly i mean it's pretty quick uh we didn't play that many games in pinoy liga and then being thrown into phil oil and then also doing pinoy legal at the same time as phil oil so we have games back to pack or it's yeah. like three or four games sometimes in a week and then we also practicing i remember one time we didn't take a break for three or four weeks like yeah. we were just practicing lifting game game consecutively um but my chemistry with the team it's always been good and the more experiences that we have the more we're going to be able to bond and understand each other uh, of course there's going to be times where i wouldn't say slip up but yeah. we're not on the same page but we're going to get it together eventually and now, now john like i saw like i know this is going to be your first year with ue right and yeah. would you describe yourself like as a leader that it's vocal when you see something mess up, like a player or something, would you tell your teammate? How how do you approach those kind of things with regards to being part of UE? I would, it really depends on who I'm talking to. Okay, so uh, you adjust. Yeah, yeah. especially on the personnel. Like some people I can yell at or <laughs> raise my voice to. And some people I have to be like, hey, you know, this is the adjustment that you need to make. So this and this can happen or this rotation can happen. And some people, like I was saying, yelling, you know, I can scream at them real quick. They're like, okay, like they won't take it personally. So, you know, just having that and understanding that allows me to be a better leader on and off the court and build relationships on a deeper level. Who are those uh, players, if I may ask? Like, if you could scream at them or you could at least raise your voice at them, it means there's a certain level of closeness that you could do that because you're not going to do that to somebody. You're not close, right? So you want to drop some names here? I'm I'm sure they could say the same. Like, when John messes up, I'm also going to yell at him. So, Uh, On the top of my head, I can think of Keon Spadonis, uh, Gerard, Willow, Jack Cruz, uh, so almost everybody. That's this is starting by well, like yeah, uh, pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty much the only person that I would say that I talk to, like you know, in a calm state, because mm-hmm. obviously there's a certain professionalism that yeah, I have with course. people. Like I don't have to raise my voice at you. You're a yeah. grown man. Mm-hmm. Uh, be the people who mostly understand, and sometimes I yell at them too. There's a certain moment, but also mm-hmm. personal as well. So I would say the same people, if not everybody. It just really depends on the timing and the place and if they really messed up or not. Mm-hmm. How would you say was like your transition to USD to UE? Would you say it's seamless? Would you say that uh, it took a while for you to adjust to UE? Or it was like a hand and glove kind of fit with regards to your move to the Red Warriors? I would say in between seamless and it mm-hmm. took a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously there are two different programs uh, yeah. different coaching staffs and methods um, I would say the only non-difference is their offense and the pick and roll okay. uh, but in the defense mentality and being able to pressure the ball handler or in a half court setting or anybody in general I would say it's a lot more 
enforced at UE. And obviously the coaches are gonna harp on you if you don't do it. So having that constant monkey on your back, you know, yeah. being able to constantly pressure, do this, do this, do this, do this, you know, it's good. We need that to be able to ingrain it into our brains to be able to do it in the game. Um, but unseemingly, I would say just connecting with my teammates, you know, that wasn't mm -hmm. hard at all. I enjoyed bonding with them and especially for my fellow mm -hmm. teammates at UST, like there's some I still talk to or like hang out with and the same thing goes at UE. And with that one, with regards to now being with UE and everything, were, was your role clear from the very start? You're going to be our point guard. This is what you're going to be doing. Or you had to adjust at some point in the summer. I would say I'm still adjusting, to be honest okay. with you. Um, which part? Like, which part? Like, being a point guard as a whole, would you say? I would, yeah, I would say being a point guard as a whole. Um, my method has always been score. Uh, so I would say I'm a combo guard mainly. Yeah. Um, but shooting, shot making, scoring on all three levels, putting pressure on the defense. So I draw them towards me to where I can make it easier pass to my teammates has always been my method. Uh, coming to UE and adjusting to what Coach Jack wants has always, he wants me to pass first. And pass then, first, that's what Coach you know, Jack score wants. Score okay. within the system. And I don't mind that. And I, you know, I've seen it work. Uh, we made it happen in Phil Oil. Um, I excelled at that role. Um, I'm just, even now, or even in the early beginning, mm -hmm. I'm still going through the bumps and struggles. Uh, there's certain timing and certain methods that I'm still learning because you know I've been playing a combo guard or a scorer. Yeah, that's what I, what I'm, I'm like a little known. kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from what I've seen from the clips, I was like, "That's a combo guard." But when we started when you started playing in Philo, I was like, "He's like a pass first now." So this kind of, this testimonial that you, that you just said kind of validated from what I've seen from Philo because you were like a pass first there, right? I think you averaged like four or five assists per game. During yeah. that span, I think it was about ten points, four or five assists. Yeah, four rebounds, two steals, somewhere around there. No one's scouting, right? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. No, one, no, no one's scouting. <laughs> so, with that one, John, like, how's like uh, how's everybody so far right now with regards to having their roles cemented? Like, you already know, like everybody's clear with their roles at this point. With regard, since we are just literally a week away, I think we're just one week yeah, away, we, like, yeah, a week and a half, a week and a half away. I would say people have a good idea about mm -hmm. the roles. People Everyone have. understands their position, uh, what they need to do, and how to do it. Um, but there's obviously going to be times or situations to where we get mixed up, and then that's just where communication <laughs> and understanding what the coach wants and how our players are going to be able to adapt to the situation comes. Uh, so communication is a really big part, and I would say, like I said earlier, you know, we're at eighty percent. Mm -hmm. uh, there's new things to figure out every day, but we have a good foundation of where we're at. I I've been seeing you on the bench last year, uh, season eighty six, with UE. You're always at the end cheering on your teammates. Uh, would you say there's a difference with the way UE played last year, especially with Remogat there to now? Would you say like there's an overhaul or? It's almost still the same. Coach Jack didn't change as much. The difference between this year and last year, I would say it's more systematic. More systematic. Okay. I would sort. I would say there's not more of a one person that's scoring because Ray Ramoga, he was a great scorer. Mm -hmm. He was a great person, and he could shoot the ball on, and score on all three levels. Um, on this team, I would say it's more pick and roll offense. You know, obviously, if we're going to score on a fast break, we're going to score on a fast break. Or if we mm -hmm. can have the opportunity to be able to take our opponent on one-on-one, -on -one, we will. But it's mainly team basketball, pick-and-roll offense, one or two passes, get get the best shot possible, and execute to the best that we can. In all your games so far during the summer, do you have any memorable ones that you remember, one that will always stick with you as of now? For me personally or as a team? Just you personally. You personally first. And then you can say maybe 
as a team that you felt like maybe this is a a, a good win for our team. But you can. Yeah. I want to start with you first. For me, I would say Pinoy Liga when I scored 14 points. Okay, Pinoy Liga. Because I was struggling at first for a while, um, especially with the first earlier games. I think that was like my fifth or sixth game with UE. Okay. And I was struggling. Like I was missing a lot of shots. I was missing like easy shots. Like I think I missed uh, even a layup at some point. And just to have that kind of felt like I got the monkey off my shoulders or I felt mm. like a sense of relief because I'm like, okay, you know, I can, I'm proving to myself that I can do this. Now let's do it again and let's keep doing it, keep it going. On a team aspect, I would say that little run that we had in Phil Oil, mm -hmm. uh, we won several games in a row. Mm -hmm. And it was so I wouldn't even say it's one win or one I would say a collective wins together because we were all on the same page and we we're executing at a high level uh for the most part in, in each game. And being able to do that, there's a good sense of like feeling good that like, okay, we're all good. You know, we can do this and we can all do it all together. Do you remember uh the name of the school that you faced in that Pinoy Liga game where you scored 14? It, it was it was Sam Beda, uh B team, I think. Oh, it's but... Sam Beda. Yeah, it's a mix of their team. It's usually a mix, right? It's yeah. not pure yeah. team B. I know it's a mix of their team A and team B. But yeah, that's a great... And actually from there, it showed in Philo, you're really consistent. There wasn't like a game where John scored zero. It's it, It's been consistent to what... what when I first saw your first game, because I watched all of Phil Oil since there's nothing much to watch during that time. So I want to watch Philo and see where these college teams are at. And I saw like this uh, about this looks looks like a sleeper for next year, for next season, in the upcoming season at least. So that's great to know. I just actually want to know, John, you guys went up against La Salle, right? You know that game. I'm sorry I had to bring it up. But it's how did it, yeah, how how was how was that? Like after like after that collapse, how was the locker room like? How did you guys talk about it? Or did you guys like th the moment you guys left the locker room, you guys didn't talk about it anymore. It's done right there and there. I would say not even just the last out game, but after mm -hmm. every game or every loss that we take, it's never, you know, mm -hmm. something that we dwell upon. It's always something that we should learn from, learn from our mistakes. Even on a win, there's always something that's happened that went wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but particularly from the LaSalle game, you know, KQ went on a great run. He yeah. scored, I believe, 13 points in three, four minutes, something like that. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Yeah. He, it's like a Reggie Miller, like, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> and then he happened to hit a game winner. It was a tough shot. Did a step back three on the right wing, I believe. And in the locker room, of course, you know, if someone, anybody goes on that type of run, coaches are going to be mad, you know. Yeah, I'll go to the, the team, the team. <laughs> Well, letting one person go on that type of run, you know, great, you know, great job for him. But you know, we need to be able to make that adjustment on defense mm -hmm. to be able to shut him down and not let the team build their momentum to where they can come back. Uh, so I would say in the team at, uh, at locker room atmosphere, you know, we understood what happened, but we got to mature for it. Uh, we got to mature from it and learn from it at the same time and just not let it happen again. Yeah, it's great to know. Actually, UE is one of those teams heading into season 87 wherein people are having a hard time projecting considering that this was a team wherein Raider Mogat came from. So you guys are coming in unknown in a way, but which I think you guys like. You like to surprise teams just next thing you know. The heck, UE is right here. Right, UE is right there for the Final Four. And I think you that's the mindset you guys want. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it'd be nice, you know, to be the underdog and then make it to that final four. But you know, we're a good team. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that can contribute on many different levels. Um, so I wouldn't say we want to be a sleeper, but we want to be known and respected, just like any other great team. Great. And um, is there any player that you could share with us, John? That is a uh... That has grown throughout the summer from 86 to 87, a player that made a mark. Since we don't see the practice, we don't see much all of your closed door tune up games. So, for you, like if you could spill that a play a player or it could be multiple players 
I feel like a player that like, like that grew, has gr- like, yeah. like grew has grown so much this summer, at least in your perspective, or got better by a lot. I mean, can I say the whole team? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, I mean, you can say that, yeah, yeah, but. Uh, the whole team, of course, like the chemistry, right? From 86 to 87 has gotten much better. Especially that you nobody left throughout the summer. It's been the same squad. At least you guys know who yeah. you're going to be rolling with. So I think that really helped. Which is, uh, in a while, it's been a while since UE has had this stability. Hmm. I mean, so, it's always nice mm-hmm. to have stability and like build a foundation mm-hmm. on because we, we know. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like being able to know who your loved ones are and be able to know who you can like, count on and be able to be supported by. So like, you know, you don't have to worry about that. It's all good over there. Um, but like I was saying earlier, everyone grew in mm-hmm. their own individual way and in a team altogether. Uh, I would say exponentially, the rookies on the team, the Nico, Ranji, Drew, uh, I mean, if you want to count me as a rookie, you can. <laughs> you are uh, technically a rookie. Te- technically, yeah. you are coming in as a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> I would say we all grew in our way to be able to understand uh, how we play our UE, uh, our role, and being able to excel at that in multiple ways and find a new role and be able to contribute even more to the team. How many years do you still have, John, including this one? I have two. You have t- so this one and the next one. Next one's your yeah, final good. one. Yes, sir. Nice. And then from now till like September 7th, when's your, do you have an idea when your first game is? Because they haven't released a schedule yet. September 8th? Uh, September 7th, I believe. Again. Also? UST. Oh, yeah, the first day of school. I believe. Yeah, I believe so. I Because I, I thought it was the September 8th as well. Yeah, uh, that's Sunday, what I also but... thought. And then I think I saw something or somebody said something to me. It got changed to September seventh. So first, uh, the first game, uh, the first day as well, along with the yeah. Ateneo UP game. Hmm. I believe we play after them actually. Which is after them? Weird cause we're, <laughs> really? Yeah, what? We're not the yeah, we're not the <laughs> host. We're not the host. I thought UP would be playing the last game. Maybe yeah, I'm I could be wrong. Go I could home. be wrong. I could be wrong. Wait, I... I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, th- yeah. Disclaimer, guys. We could be wrong. We don't have any schedule <laughs> right here. We're, we're yeah. just guessing at this point when this podcast was made. Just te- just check the timestamp. <laughs> yeah. Do you have like a team that you all that you are a player that you've been looking forward to face this coming season? I wouldn't say any particular. Just I yeah. I want to compete in against every team in general. I wouldn't say I have something against every team, but I want to give <laughs> my best to each and every one of them. That's great. And uh, from now till the opening, do you guys have any closed door tune up games that you'll be facing? Like any? Did you guys face any pro teams prior to their season, like any PBA team and PBL teams? Because I spoke with uh, with the others and they faced some PBA and PBL teams. Uh, PBA team, no, but we mm-hmm. played MPBL, mm-hmm. uh, Korean. And I believe one Taiwan professional team. How was the uh, was was it what was it like facing the Koreans? I mean, oh, uh, I mean, this is my this is my fifth time I believe playing against oh, a Korean team. Fifth time, okay. Because when I was at UST, uh, we went to Korea. Like it was maybe like a week or two after I landed here for the first time. Mm-hmm. And we went to Korea to go play, and we played two or three professional teams. And then for UE, I played one or two before season eighty six, and then we played one against, and one before season eighty seven. Not too long ago. And the experience of playing with them is that they don't stop moving. You know, they they all they all, they, all they, they they don't <laughs> stop moving. They're going yeah. through screens. It's like five four five curries. On the court. Yeah. <laughs> and they can all shoot, so you've got to step up and be able to contest each and every person. And being able to play against that, you know, it keeps you on your toes, uh, it keeps you disciplined, keeps you active, and overall gets you in better shape. <laughs> yeah, the cardio uh, makes you yeah. like, wow. I got so tired. Were you tired? Or you, I, I'm sure you guys were conditioned 
or you, you guys were just caught by surprise. Oh shit! Yeah, I forgot we could we we're playing the Koreans today. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say caught by surprise, but you know, they shoot very well over there, and they make a lot of shots, free throws, layups, mid range, three pointers. You know, they do a lot of pick and pop. They do, do a lot of cross court pass. It's more driving and then dish out type of style of play. I feel like, and it felt like every shot they were shooting. 70% of it was going in, so. <laughs> you just be like, come on, like, what the hell? Yeah. Is <laughs> hand, hand in their face and everything, good defense, and just like, what what can, what else do you want from me? <laughs> Coach, I was right there. You can see, check the replay. My hand was <laughs> right there. Were they shooting the free throws, like let, hitting the ball through the backboard? So actually, the last Korean team I played, they weren't doing that. They weren't doing it. Mm, okay. They shot, you know, they made it through Normally. the backboard. And I was, yeah. Yeah. And that's what they're notoriously known for. Yeah, that's what they're and, known for, right? Yeah. So that kind of took me by surprise, seeing that. You guys are shooting normally. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> so John just to, just to cap it off what's it like for you guys to uh for the next week what's in store for you guys will there be any other games or it's just mostly just going to be your own practices won't be facing other teams anymore uh we have practice tomorrow and then we have one more tuna game and then for the rest of next week it will just be practicing and lifting and Pep rally, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> pep rally, pep rally. Maybe. Do, do you guys do you guys add the element of film? Do you guys do some film in the summer? I'm sure you guys do film during, but I'm not sure about the summer. Not so much when it's summer. Yeah, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say not mm. so much, but the coaches do a great job of scouting mm. and watching film themselves to almost to the point to where we don't need to. But you know, as a great ball player, you're going to do it by yourself. You're going to watch old film. You're going to watch new film because you never know when that you're going to use that play. You know, they're going to bring it up. So, I would say the coaches do a great job. You know, we study their inbounds, I mean, their outbounds play, their sideline out of bounds, and also their just half court and sometimes how they press break. So, they do a great job on that. Great. I'm excited, John. Uh, a, a week and a half away before we see you guys play, hopefully, in the first day. Hopefully, we're correct. If we're not, then sorry, yeah. guys. We don't have any schedule with us. <laughs> but regardless, it's, it's going to be an awesome season for UE. With John about there right there and the rest of the guys. And John, I just want to thank you again for making time to attend the podcast. And I'll see you soon in the venue, man. All right, man. I appreciate you for having me. And everyone who's watching Nico, make sure y'all subscribe and like. John has his own YouTube channel as well. You should uh, re-upload, man. I-, I saw that one. You you think I didn't see it? You should uh <laughs> you should upload more. You should upload more. <laughs> I got you. I'll get on it. <laughs> <laughs> behind the the locker room or something or whatever i'm just yeah. kidding but yeah you should behind upload more John. it's it's interesting to see those vlogs especially from a player uh player perspective not a lot of people do that right now not a lot of players coach topex used to do his behind the scenes but i think he stopped <laughs> <laughs> because like sometimes it's like uh, i wouldn't say it's hard but like it's a hassle to like okay you know i gotta Edit. record this or like yeah so like to make sure you know you're capturing you know what you want and also trying to concentrate on the basketball part you know it can be it can kind of throw your mind off especially when I need to perform or I need to yeah, do what sure. I need to do yeah but but I'll try don't worry yeah, yeah. maybe try to do it on TikTok so just make it like a set a minute or right a minute and thirty seconds mm-hmm. it's faster compared to your yours was like nine to fourteen minutes it was great on that one right it was long <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a vlog. I mean, it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's a vlog. Minutes, it's supposed right? to be. It's yeah. supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be that way. Yeah. But yeah, uh, thank you so much, John. I can't wait for those uh, vlogs if you can. Like you heard it here first that that I, that I tried to tell John, you gotta restart that one, and mm-hmm. don't forget to cheer for the UE Red Warriors this coming UAP season eighty seven. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on YouTube, and follow on Spotify, guys. And John, thank you so much again, man. See you next time. Thank you.